Hola y bienvenidos a Coffee Break Spanish. Welcome back to Coffee Break Spanish. It's lesson 65 and in this lesson we're going to continue to look at the perfect tense and we'll also be talking about the little word ya. Now ya is a tricky word to use sometimes. It generally means already but there are some other idiomatic ways that ya is used in Spanish and you'll hear a couple of them in this lesson. Bueno, ya está. So to begin with, Cara, you remember last week that we were looking at the formation of the perfect tense. It was made up of two things, really. One was a part of the verb haber, and the other, can you remember what the other was? A past participle. Exactly. Now, just when we're talking about past participles, I've had an email from someone saying, why aren't you saying participle? Well, the fact is that in the UK, we say participle, and I believe in America, you say participle. It's still the same thing. Doesn't really matter which way you pronounce it. So we were talking about the past participle and let's just talk about the past participle of an regular AR verb. If we take cantar, what would be the past participle of cantar? Cantado. Cantado. That A-D-O ending. Cantado. Cantado. And let's take another example. Bailar. The past participle of bailar. Bailado. Bailado. Exactamente. So we've got... A-D-O, the ending for A-R verbs. And the ending for E-R and I-R verbs isn't A-D-O, but... I-D-O, I-D-O. I-D-O, exactly. And that's the same for both E-R and I-R verbs. So let's take an E-R verb, beber, to drink. That would become... Bebido. Bebido. And an I-R verb, vivir, to live... Bebido. Bebido, exactly. So A-R becomes A-D-O... And ER and IR become IDO. So that's all very well for the past participle, but what about the parts of haber? Can you remember how that conjugates, Cara? E, as, a, hemos, habéis, an. Yeah, e, as, a, hemos, habéis, an. And they're joined together with the past participle. So let's try and see if we can do a little test here. I'll give you some things to translate into Spanish and see if you can work them out. They're all using regular verbs, either AR or IR verbs. How would you say, I have danced? He bailado. He bailado. Muy bien. Okay, let's try this one. How would you say, we have sung? Hemos cantado. Hemos cantado. Muy bien. What about, they have lived? Han vivido. Han vivido. Muy bien. And using the to form, you have drunk a glass of water. Has bebido agua. <laughs> has bebido agua, vale, pero has bebido un vaso de agua. Un vaso de agua. Un vaso, a glass, de agua of water. Un vaso de agua. Un vaso de agua. Can you remember the word that you would use for a glass when you're talking about a glass of wine? No. Una copa. Una copa. Una copa. Una copa. Una copa de vino. Una copa de vino. So how would you say, you have drunk a glass of wine? Has bebido una copa de vino. Has bebido una copa de vino. Muy bien. Okay, let's try one more. She has learned Spanish. He aprendido español. Are you sure it's he aprendido español? Oh, she sorry. has. A. A. Ha aprendido español. Ha aprendido español. Okay, and that does suggest that she's learned the whole of the Spanish language, okay? Ha aprendido español. Okay, let's move on and let's talk a little about when you would actually use this tense. Last week we talked about the fact that it's used to translate the to have done something concept. So, I have done this, you have done that, and so on. But there's another use of the perfect tense that is very, very common. So far in Coffee Break Spanish, we've learnt the preterite tense and the imperfect tense. And when we learned the preterite, we thought of the preterite as a narrative tense, something that tells a story in the past. And this is indeed the case. However, sometimes you can use the perfect tense to tell that same story. 
And this is particularly connected to certain phrases. Some key phrases that often suggest the immediate past are things like ayer, yesterday, anoche, last night, esta mañana, this morning, and so on. So when you've got these key phrases, very often you need to think about the perfect tense as opposed to the preterite. Let's try this. If you wanted to translate this morning, I sang a song. So, using the perfect tense, how would you say that, Cara? Esta mañana he cantado una canción. Exactly. Esta mañana he cantado una canción. You could get away with saying, esta mañana canté una canción, uh, that's using the preterite tense, and you would indeed use that in certain parts of the Spanish-speaking world. However, if you want to be ultra-correct, then you should use the perfect tense, because in a way, this morning is linked in some way to the present. This morning is only this morning, because today is today, if that makes sense. Esta mañana he cantado una canción. So let's take another example. Let's use the word ayer. Ayer means? Yesterday. Yesterday. And again, yesterday is only yesterday because today is today. Yeah? Yeah. (laughs) So, yesterday I ate paella. Ayer he comido paella. Ayer he comido paella. Exactly. So, he comido is the perfect tense, I have eaten. And notice that you wouldn't translate that in English as I have eaten, because even if we're talking about yesterday in English, you would say I ate. Yesterday I ate paella. Ayer he comido paella. Again, comí paella in the preterite tense would make perfect sense. People would understand what you were talking about. But again, if you want to be very correct, then you can use the perfect tense in this way to refer to an immediate past. Indeed, the perfect tense is often called the present perfect because it has this link to the present. So let's run through these phrases that are your key phrases for the use of the perfect tense or the present perfect tense. We started with esta mañana. Esta mañana. Esta mañana means? This morning. Yeah. Equally, if we're now in the evening, we could say esta tarde. Esta tarde. So esta tarde, if we're referring to the past, when we're in the evening, we would be talking about? This afternoon. This afternoon, exactly. So esta mañana, esta tarde, it could be yesterday. Ayer. Ayer. Or it could be last night, and that's anoche. Anoche. So how would you say, last night I went out with my friends? Anoche he salido con mis amigos. Anoche he salido, salido, from salir. Anoche he salido con mis amigos. Try that again. Anoche he salido con mis amigos. Exactly. Uh, So that's anoche, ayer. We could even talk about la semana pasada. La semana pasada. Which means? Last week. Last week, yeah. Again, it means last week because this week is this week. So it's still this idea of referring to a past that's related in some way to the present. So la semana pasada hemos visitado Madrid. So last week we visited Madrid. Another phrase that is similar in this situation is hace dos semanas. Hace dos semanas. And what would that mean? Two weeks ago? Yeah, two weeks ago. So, hace dos semanas, two weeks ago. And again, that's referring in a, in a, in a way to the present. Hace dos semanas is linked to just now. Hace dos semanas, two weeks ago from now, has empezado el curso. You began the course. Hace dos semanas has empezado el curso. Hace dos semanas has empezado el curso. Hace dos semanas has empezado el curso. Muy bien. Now, I want to stress something here, and that is that this perfect tense, first of all, is used in lots of places where Spanish is spoken, but sometimes the preterite would be used. And for that reason, 
if you want to use the preterite, then people will understand exactly what you say, what you're saying. If you say, for example, esta mañana fui al mercado, this morning I went to the, the market, people will understand perfectly what you mean. In a sense, it's maybe like the English saying, this morning I did go to the market. Now, that might sound a little strange, but people understand what it means. However, if you want to be ultra correct, then you should try to use the perfect tense. And it is very easy to use, because once you've got the past participle and the part of haber, then you've got the perfect tense. So, so far we've seen two examples of where you use the perfect tense. Today we've been talking about this immediate past, this very recent past, when we've been looking at key phrases, ayer, anoche, la semana pasada, hace dos semanas, esta tarde, and so on. We've also looked at the situation where we're translating specifically, I have done something. And I'm just going to add to this just now by introducing the word ya. Ya, Y-A. Ya, do you know what ya means, Cara? Mm, we use it with things like ya está. Yeah, exactly. Ya literally means already. So if you want to ask someone, have you already eaten? You would say, ya has comido. Ya has comido. Ya has comido. Ya has comido. So the, the ya and the as are running together. Ya has comido. Ya has comido. So have you already eaten? Um, some people say that in, in Scotland or in certain parts of Scotland, um, people go and visit other people in their house and they begin with, you'll, you'll have had your tea. So ya has cenado. Yes, the nado. That's maybe a little Scottishism, but we'll, we'll not go into that too much in case we offend people. Um, so, ya as, or ya plus the perfect tense, to have already done something. So, how would you say, I have already drunk a glass of water? Ya he bebido un vaso de agua. Ya he bebido un vaso de agua. Exacto. Ya he bebido un vaso de agua. Or what about, I have already visited Spain. Ya he visitado España. Exactly. So it's ya plus the perfect tense. And it's this idea to have already done something. Ya he visitado España. Even if you leave out the ya then there's still an idea of to have already done something. He visitado España. I've visited Spain. And it's kind of the same as saying, ya he visitado España. I've already visited Spain. Okay, let's look at one other thing before we finish here, and that is irregular past participles. Just like in other tenses, some verbs are irregular in the perfect tense, and that's really because they have irregular past participles. Note that always, 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 haber stays the same. So you always say, e, as, a, hemos, habéis, an. That's always the same. And in the perfect tense, it's the past participle, which sometimes is irregular. And we're going to look at a few common irregular verbs here. Let's begin with abrir. Abrir is a very common IR verb, it means... To open. Yeah. But you don't say abrido, taking the ir off and adding ido. You say abierto. Abierto. Yeah. And you may well have come across the word abierto, which would mean open on, for example, a, a shop window. Abierto are the opposite being cerrado. Now, cerrado comes from cerrar, to close, and it's a past participle. And notice here that the past participle takes on an adjectival meaning. So, cerrado, closed, abierto, open. Abierto. Abierto. So, how would you say, I have opened the window? He abierto la ventana. He abierto la ventana. Perfecto. Okay, another irregular is decir. Decir means? To say. Yeah, and decir becomes dicho. Dicho. Dicho, that really is quite irregular, that one. So, how would you say, have you said? Has dicho? 
as dicho. Now, dicho, just when we're talking about this, um, you could say, for example, if you're trying to pronounce a word, um, you could say, lo he dicho bien. Lo he dicho bien. This is a good way of practicing your Spanish and getting better at your Spanish pronunciation. If you're reading a word and you try to pronounce it, and then you say, lo he dicho bien. Lo he dicho bien. So, it, have I said well. Did I say it correctly? Lo he dicho bien. Lo he dicho bien. Okay. Dicho, coming from decir, to say. Another one linked to saying and expressing would be escribir, meaning to write. And escribir in the perfect tense, or the past participle of escribir, is escrito. 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 How would you say then, we have already written the letter? <laughs> ya hemos escrito la carta. Muy bien. Ya hemos escrito la carta. Ya hemos escrito la carta. Okay, so that's escribir, becoming escrito. Hacer, or hacer, means... To do or to make. That's it. And in the perfect tense, the past participle of hacer is hecho. Hecho. So, I have done my homework. Do you remember the word for homework? Los deberes. Los deberes. Okay, so my homework would be mis deberes. I have done my homework. He hecho mis deberes. Muy bien. How would you say, I've already done my homework? Ya yeah, he hecho mis deberes. Ya he hecho mis deberes. Muy bien. So, we've had abrir, becoming... Abierto. Decir, becoming... Dicho. Escribir, which became... Escrito. Hacer. Hecho. Uh, let's do one more. Let's take ver. Ver means... To see. Now, ver becomes visto. Visto. That's V-I-S-T-O. So how would you say, I have seen the film? He visto la película. He visto la película. Muy bien. How would you say, this morning we saw the monument? Esta mañana hemos visto la monumenta. El monumento. <laughs> el, el monumento. Esta mañana hemos visto el monumento. Esta mañana hemos visto el monumento. Okay, that's where we're going to leave it today. And that's where we're going to leave it today for this edition of Coffee Break Spanish. Thanks for joining us and we hope it's been useful. You can join the Coffee Break Spanish community on Facebook at facebook.com slash coffeebreakspanish and follow at Learn Spanish on Twitter. Muchas gracias y hasta pronto. This is a production of the Radiolingua Network. Find out more at radiolingua.com.